Hello everyone and welcome back. I don't think I've done one of these cases before on here, so I wanted to show you this is a Radix case. So nice young person came in. You can see that it has that extra root inside there, very deep decay on this tooth as well. And when you're dealing with a Radix, there's a couple things you need to keep in mind. I always like taking combiums on my patients, and so I knew that this was here. It's very important to make sure you catch these because when you're managing them, there's a couple things that you need to think about. So first off is kind of where they are even located in there. The rule of symmetry that you see in lower molars and pretty much all other endo teeth as well is not going to apply here. Um, one thing you'll notice is I needed to tighten up the uh, screw on the bottom of this electric hand piece. I actually have recorded, I haven't uh, done the voiceover, but uh, I have a video showing how to repair the cartridge or replace the cartridges on electric hand pieces as well. But pretty much if you do see that, all you gotta do is take a little precision screwdriver set, um, tighten up at the bottom, and then that should stop the leakage. In this case, unfortunately, one of the O-rings has gone bad, and I'm working right now with the company to get some replacements for that as well. Um, really nasty leathery dent, and as you can see, so you want to get that or the, all cleaned out just because of the decay. As far as whether or not we could do selective carriers re removal in this case, um, patient was 18, so it's with how deep the decay is, you'll see here in a second, this case was very, very very inflamed. I actually had some trouble getting this thing all the way dry and calm down and stop bleeding. So whenever we see that much bleeding, I'm not highly confident in my ability to do selective caries removal, especially with how leathery and soft that decay is. Um, not something you really want to worry about. I want to deal with another tip that I have whenever you're dealing with these pediatric cases where I mean patients 18 so not really pediatric but uh, younger people um, oftentimes they are going to have a buckle pit which was one of the starts of that where that carious lesion came into so very good idea to remove that as well and just you can see how I brushed up against that and how this tooth is just a shell that's all that is really left in here this is your classic we have lots of Mountain Dew plus lots of fluoride and it makes the enamel really hard and the dent on the inside is a little soft and we're going to start off with my workhorse there we go my vocal lessons have paid off workhorse work workhorse damn it okay anyway <laughs> with the access here you saw how far I had to go to the lingual to pick that up and you'll notice this is what I was talking about it's not symmetrical in this sort of case another thing here is your distal lingual these radix cases they almost always have severe curves they're very skinny as well and so you have to approach these almost like the curved canal I'll drop a link to that video if you haven't seen that one before but when you're dealing with really tight curves and skinny canals there are a few things you need to go over don't worry I didn't put a teaching slide in there <laughs> um, we'll leave it for the other one you You'll notice that's why I started with a six, and I haven't actually taken that 2006 down the ML or the distal lingual canal at this point either, because I want to see how thick is it and how bad is that curve. So what I'm doing here is just kind of poking around and feeling. Thankfully, it dropped about halfway down right away telling me that this is not that skinny of a canal. There are times when I've been working on these Radix cases and I can only get the 2006 to go in maybe a few millimeters before it starts to bind and that's because the canal is just that skinny. So a uh, couple things here, keep things nice and small when working on any Radix case because they are going to be curvy and they're going to be skinny. The 1704 is gonna be my final file on this case, especially with how, given how small that canal is to begin with and this is what I was talking about of just how much bleeding there is I've gone through I think at this point an entire thing of Triton plus two things of bleach I cut out a bunch of the rinsing but uh, I definitely used a fair amount of liquid going through here to try to get this cleaned out as far as working length it's pretty much the same as any other canal um, I smoothed over that the one thing I will say is do not be surprised if your distal lingual working length is a lot shorter than the other canals. Um, in this case, they were all right around that 19.5, 20-ish, 21, um, but you can have cases where the rest of the canals are at 21 and it's a 17. That is not uncommon. This is very normal for this sort of thing. More bleeding. Once again, this case was not going to work with just removing the decay and putting some DC putty on top of it and calling it a day. So lots and lots of rinsing here. I always rinse with either the Triton or with bleach in this case because we need to make sure that we remove as much of that organic tissue as possible. If you're a dental student watching this video, there's a great quiz question, which is what is bleach remove? It is organic material. EDTA removes inorganic material. 
finishing up here, you can see I did flare just a little bit. Um, these are actually the mesials that I was having difficulty getting down. The distals were pretty straightforward, um, surprisingly. <laughs> and so I had to do a little bit more flaring with that 2006 on the mesials of all things to get down there. Um, I skipped over the final rinse as well, but we were able to finally get the t case to stop bleeding, which is good. Um, rinse out with EDTA, everything like normal, um, as you've seen before, and then go ahead and use my micro suction to get things nice and dry in preparation to fill up the tooth, air dry, and start using your paper points. And you can see the paper points are coming out nice and dry, no bleeding on them whatsoever, which is fantastic. So going to use the squirt technique for this. This is a great, great case for the squirt technique because that curve, it's very easy for the gutta percha to follow that curve nicely um, and get a good seal here. Sometimes you'll find if you're using like a warm vertical or a single cone that the curve curvature on these cases is a little bit more steep than you would think, but that's what it looks like when it was all cleaned out. You can see no bleeding, which is fantastic. And so we're gonna go ahead and fill these teeth up now using AH plus score technique like you've seen before. If you watch my curved canals video, you'll see that I, or you'll, you'll hear, or I'm not sure what the verb would be there. <laughs> you'll see that what I do is use a smaller K file to recapitulate. In this case, the 17 went down very easily on all the canals, including that radix. And so pretty easy to recapitulate with the 20k file here. I went through, sped up all the squirt technique stuff. You've seen that if ha if you haven't, I think it was my second to last video. I'm not sure when exactly this one's going out, um, but it, it's a very recent one. It says it in the title and I go into depth a little bit more on how the actual squirt technique works. One thing with the PacMac here, because of that curve, you'll notice I'm only going in about maybe two, three millimeters. I'm not dropping down to the normal third of the canal width, like I, or length that I w normally would. And that's because I don't want to, if you put a pack mac around a curve, it's gonna break. Um, ask me how I know that. It happens more often than it should. <laughs> so everything looks good as far as the check film. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of cauterization with a BNL Alpha. One cool trick, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, but with a heated tip, most of the the time with a latex dam, if you hit the rubber dam, it will actually kind of melt away really nicely, exposing that area. And you'll see me kind of brush up against the tooth here to make sure right there, yes, that we have clear access. And I want to make sure we don't have any bleeding points in this area. So we're going to do a traditional buildup here. This patient is old enough that they're going to go ahead and get the crown done right after. So I'm not worried about making it full contour, just enough that it's cleansable. Um, normal stuff with the BioClear like you've seen before. And this is one of those really good cases to show why I use the disclosing agent because there were spots where there were no bacterial activity at all and there are spots where there was actually a lot more than anticipated. So when I do the buildups here, I always start with the enamel. It's better to have a little bit of a longer etch in enamel and then a shorter etch in dentin as well. That's what it looks like when it's all cleaned off and you can clearly see how that distal lingual is more to the lingual. This tooth is not symmetrical. So this is why taking the comb beam is such a useful tool in this case to know A, that you have one, B, what is the curvature, and C, where to drill if it is calcified, because these can be calcified as well. This is one of the more common retreats I have to do on lower molars. So um, air thinning this out, I am happy to say we have switched now. I finally run out of my old clear fill photo bond. So we are on to, this is the two bottle solution. I am trying out both. Um, right now, I think I actually like the one bottle solution a a little bit better because based on the lit that I've seen, they're pretty much equivalent, which is great. And so only having to have the one bottle is really, really nice. One thing I did notice, I kept this all in, it seems a lot thicker. <laughs> than the old school photobond stuff. So I have to do a lot more air thinning than I did with the previous three bottle system. I'm gonna drop a comment if you've seen something similar here. Light cure like normal, speed that up for you. And then we're gonna build it up using build it. Now in this case, the Centrix tube was completely full of build it. And the problem was this tooth is huge. The decay was very, very large in this tooth as well. And so You'll see, I'm actually gonna to have to pause here. I cut it out, but I had to have the assistant mix another one, which every now and then on large molars with really deep decay, you do actually have to do that. One tip here, and this is from, shout out to Dr. Uh, Nate Lawson out of uh, Alabama. Um, he 
recommends actually letting dual cure start to cure itself. And so I didn't actually light cure this one. Um, the little spot on the distal where we had some exposed uh, gut gingiva, it really wasn't causing any issues. And so I, this is, there's no light cure on this, but the lower material is actually starting to harden. And his reasoning was the, when you have a dual cure composite and it starts to cure and adhere to the tooth, it's far more gentle than if you snap cure with the light. So um, something out there, I'm trying to play around with it, see if I notice a difference. I really didn't notice any micro fractures in the enamel or anything like that. But you know, it's it, based on the research that he's done, it's a something to consider here. So uh, that's in case you notice there wasn't a second cure or a, I guess first cure technically of the composite, that's why. So going to polish this off. Like I said, this patient's old enough. They're gonna go get the crown done pretty much I think they were getting it done within a week of this one so I'm not too concerned about making something that's going to have to last for a long time if they were 14 that's a different story that's when I'm going to do something like full contour or something along those lines do the final polish here I still want to remove any sharp edges so they're not having any issues with their tongue and when it kind of comes down to doing that distal aspect here. I did remove it. We're going to be using that workhorse. There we go. Burr again. And you'll notice here, I didn't use the larger prep burr, and that's because these teeth were really tight, but I do believe there's enough space here that the general dentist can get a nice contact and margin without having to do any recontouring of the root structure or the adjacent tooth. One trick here, you're going to see me do it in just a second. If you're having trouble, flip it sideways. You can create a really nice, because this burr is so skinny, you can create a really nice emergence profile as you're going in there, as you can see, and that allows you to get a little more space so when you do your final polish down at the root structure which is what i'm doing right now it gives you that little excess space now some people might say well why don't you leave that little contact right there and it's because the patient already shows that they're not very great at hygiene and so by leaving this open it makes it so you can just really rinse with water and this will be able to be cleaned out and then i often also give out proxy brushes in these cases to help scrub that area keep that gingiva nice and healthy and that is what it looks like obviously a little bit of inflammation inside the gingiva but it should heal up nicely and here's what the case looks like you can't even see the distal lingual in this angle but really please with how this case turned out. Anyway, I hope that helps any of you who are managing these cases in the future. Do be aware they are a little bit more difficult just because of that curvature and because it is so skinny. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I, seriously, the amount of love that I've received. Uh, I was recently at Endocon and to see the amount of people who came up and talked to me, that was fantastic. Um, I love each and every one of you. <laughs> uh, please keep liking and subscribing. Um, comment on what you'd like to see more of. I, am, I promise I'm working on the cases. I had a lot to catch back up on. We've had a few family things, so I have not been able to work on the microscope cases or video, but I promise that's coming out soon. And as always, I will talk to you next time.